So what I'm gonna do in this video is go in depth on every single detail on my camper setup. From the reason why I chose the truck that I did to the actual camper shell, the construction inside the camper shell and the accessories and additions I've made to it. I've gotten a lot of questions in my other videos about tons of different things related to my setup. So I'm hoping to cover all those in this one video. I'm basically gonna go over everything top to bottom in detail. And if you still have questions after watching, which you won't because I'm gonna go over everything, then you can post them in the comment section below and I'll try to get back to you. Also, some of this material is gonna be stuff that I've covered in other videos. I'm just trying to consolidate all the information into one video. And if you're more interested in seeing the way I live out of my setup and not so much interested in the actual construction or details of my camper setup, then check back next week and I'll be uploading a new video that might interest you more. So my truck is a 03 Tacoma standard cab and I originally bought this truck with building the camper setup in mind. So the setup I have right now is pretty much exactly how I imagined it. I got the standard cab because it makes a pretty small truck. During the spring and summer, I'm usually out working in the mountains, living out of my truck. So the size of the truck doesn't really matter out there. But in the winter, I'm back living in town a lot and having a big truck is a pain when parking on the side of the road at my home or just driving in congested areas in general. So I wanted the flexibility of having a full size bed, which is a little bit over six feet long while also having a pretty compact truck. The four door version would be nice for the extra room, but the bed is only five feet long, which is too short for me. The camper shell is a snug top highliner. I bought it used off Craigslist for $300, had to drive eight hours to get it, but it was well worth the drive for that price. And camper shells of any kind are extremely hard to find for a standard cab. So I was lucky to find the exact type of shell I was looking for. I like this camper shell because being a highliner, it has a raised roof and it gives me maybe five or six more inches of headroom, which doesn't sound like much, but actually makes a huge difference. Something to look out for if you're buying a used camper shell is the gasket that runs along the bed rails of the truck. The gasket on this shell when I bought it was flat and worn out so I ordered some gasket material from Snug Top and stripped out the old gasket and glued down a new one. Um, there's plenty of videos how to do this on YouTube. Another thing I like about this camper shell is the gasket that connects the rear truck window and the camper shell. This allows me to access the camper shell from the inside of the truck cab if I need to reach back and grab something, though I can't actually fit my whole body through. Also, and this is huge, get a limo tent done on your camper shell windows. This will stop the light from coming in when you're sleeping and it really helps a lot. And your windows will be too dark for anyone to look in if they're trying to steal stuff. Something else I really highly suggest having on your camper shell is screens. If you can find a camper shell that has screens on it, um, it's super nice, especially in the summer. You can have your windows open and stuff at night, um, but not let any bugs in. So it's super handy to have. Now I'm going to talk more about the build materials and the construction of the camper. Right now I've got the bed frame pulled out of the truck, but because of that I can show you guys the plastic lining that I've taped down. This is so that the pullout drawer can slide in and out easier, as well as protecting the paint on the truck bed. So here I've got the whole bed frame and pullout drawer laid out. The construction is pretty simple for the bed frame, just 2x4s with 3 8 inch plywood for the surface. And the side panels are just a tongue and groove fencing wood. The right side of the surface, I had to cut out just to make sure it fit with the wheel well and everything else that's over there. I've got it pulled out right now because I had some mold problems with the small leak. I pulled it out so I could sand down those areas and then I'm gonna put a couple layers of polyurethane on it to hopefully weatherize it a bit. You can see the construction here is fairly simple. There's nothing too crazy about it. And some of these pieces of wood, like this one right here, are just there to add support in certain areas. The pull-out drawer is made out of quarter-inch ply, and using the fencing wood again here is the front of the drawer. And I glued down some thin automotive carpet that I bought at Home Depot to, to the interior of the drawer. You might have noticed that I have a little lockbox here, and I added that just to have somewhere in the back where I can lock things up if I feel like I need to. It's a decent sized drawer, so if I feel like I need to store something in there, I can. Um, and the way it works is this little arm um, just goes into this 2x4, this little hole that I drilled out on this 2x4 um, to lock it in. Now, if someone still wants to get into this box, they'll get into the box. But the whole thing with truck camping is just making it harder um, for someone if that situation does arise. Okay, so I've put the bed frame back in, and I'm just going to show you kind of how the uh, drawer slides in and out and just to show you again the plastic uh, the plastic sheet that I have at the bottom of the truck bed just to protect it and let this drawer slide easier obviously there's nothing in it right now but even with all my clothes in it it still uh, slides in and out pretty well so I specifically built this uh, bed frame so that the horizontal 2x4s 
will kind of slide right into the bed, uh, the bed of the truck. As you can see, there's kind of grooves on the bed of the truck. Um, so the horizontal 2 by 4 slide in there and keep it steady so it doesn't shift around from side to side. The cabinet is also pretty simple. It's just made out of 2 by 2s and the fencing tongue and groove wood. The tongue and groove wood is awesome to work with because you can make sliding doors really easily and they haven't worn out yet after about a year. But really it's just 2 by 2s um, there's three vertical 2x2s two and then there's a horizontal 2x2 two two on the top um, right here and then one on the bottom. And then the fencing material as the paneling. By the way, you should coat whatever wood you have in the back of your camper in some kind of polyurethane or varnish just to help protect from water or molding. The carpet basically just gets clamped down by the bed frame on one side and by the cabinet on the other side. They're both just basically set onto the carpet. And under the carpet is a yoga mat just to make it a little softer. You can see on the top of the cabinet, uh, on the surface, it's a little beat up, there's a hole over here. Um, and, but it's just from having random stuff strapped onto here. Sometimes I have my snowboard strapped up on here or a skateboard or something like that. And just after jiggling around through the driving, um, it can kind of grind down the top. So in the back of the cabinet, we have the inverter with the switch underneath it for it. And the wires coming out of the inverter runs this red wire, which go to the lights and go to the battery in my truck. And I'll get to that in a minute. I also added a little iPhone dock just to make charging easier. The lights are just three-way, um, one, two, or off lights that I bought on Amazon. And on one of them, I have a black cellophane film. And because that sulfane film is there, it makes it a little bit darker. So when I just have that one light on, it's more of like a dim night light. Then the wires just go into this little wire casing that I got at an, at an electronics store. And that's hot glued to the camper shell just to make it look a little bit more clean. So the way that I get power back here to the inverter and the lights is I'm basically just running a wire from the car, from the battery under the hood um, all the way back here. And it comes out right up here and it runs down under the truck. I'll show you that in a second, but um, comes up here, connects to the inverter, and then we have one wire here that is the ground wire that's just connected to the truck. And so that wire comes out um, and it runs in this casing under the truck from back by the inverter where I sh just showed you. Um, and it runs under the truck all the way up to where the battery is. Right here. Um, connects to the battery and then I have a fuse um, set on that just in case I run or just in case I pull too many amps in the inverter. The battery that I have is a Duralast Platinum. It's an absorbed glass mat battery so it's not like a normal lead acid battery but it just has a lot more capacity than a normal car battery would um, so I can run my lights in the back of my camper shell, um, charge anything that I need to and still have plenty of battery to start the car in the morning. I've gotten a lot of questions asking about this towel rack that I made um, and how I did it. And all it is is I'm using two metal L brackets um, used for like wood framing and stuff um, that I got at a hardware store and I literally just screwed those into the camper shell. The, my camper shell has got a pretty thick top so I can screw right into it and then I use um, just some, uh, I'm not sure what type of foam it is but I got it at the hardware store too and I wrapped it in that just to um, just in case, you, you know, I, I bump my head into it or something like that. And then this metal dowel right here, I'm not sure what it, its actual application is for, but I got that at the hardware store too. So I made this screen just out of fabric that I got at Arts and Crafts store, and then I put Velcro on it, um, just so I can attach it up to the top here and stuff like that. Um, the Velcro just kind of attaches to this um, fabric that's on my camper shell and holds it up there. And that's just nice to have, um, especially if you're sleeping back here, it just provides a little bit extra privacy. Uh, that also keeps the sunlight out really well in the morning. So I also added these uh, tie down hooks so that I can use bungee cords to strap anything on to the top of this cabinet that I want to. Sometimes I strap my snowboard on there. And that's just really nice so that I can keep this aisleway um, clear and then have whatever I want um, strapped up here. Also having a rubber floor mat at the entrance is pretty handy just to throw your shoes or anything that might be damp or wet onto. Obviously you don't want to hold that stuff in inside for a while, but um, just while you're driving, that's handy to have somewhere like that where you can throw wet stuff or your shoes. 
So right now I have the mattress cover and sheets and stuff off of the bed foam, but I just took it off to show you guys. Um, I just got this at a foam store. They make foam for like cushions and sofas and stuff like that. And I just asked them if they could make me a um, piece of foam with the exact dimensions that I had. Uh, I want to say it's four inches thick, um, but it's actually really comfortable. Um, and so if you can find a foam shop and get your mattress done this way. It's pretty cheap. I got it for maybe 50 bucks. My whole goal with these videos is to kind of help people that maybe want to get into truck camping a little bit, but don't exactly know where or how to start. Um, so hopefully with these videos, I'm kind of giving you a starting place and then you can go out and create your own setup however you want to have it. Other than that, guys, thanks for watching and check back next week. Uh, I'll have a new video uploaded that has a little bit more to do with me actually living in my camp show.